Speaker, Director and CMO of Indofood, please welcome Axton Salim. Good morning. So how's everyone doing today? <laughs> Happy May the 4th to everyone. But before anything, truly humbled that I've been asked to speak in an event where like-minded people gather. Let's say I've got a confession to make. The initial reason that I wanted to do this was that I was promised I could get on stage riding on my Indo ice cream Garuda. So <laughs> it's a little bigger than what I'm used to in the laptop. So I don't know what I'm getting myself into, but let's start. How do I, how do I have a serious talk about not being serious? In my 14 years that I've been working with the company, the last two has been most exciting. Facebook is the new place where we get our news and also acts as our photo book, journaling, and together with, uh, together with Tinder, now it's a place where we can find love. YouTube is the, new, is the new place where we can express ourselves. And like me, I get to pick up a slime making skills with my 10 year old niece. And a certain president really takes it to the next level, expressing himself on Twitter. And Instagram is the new gathering grounds where people share experiences, food posts, and also it works as a branding tool. So with that, e-commerce e marketplace now serves as a channel for empowerment for small and medium businesses. And Spotify is where my experience was in the 90s in a CD shop where I get to experience new music. So all these are made possible because these are all accessible at the palm of our hands. Now, consumers can say what they want, when they want it. There is so much noise vying for the same 24 hours of a person that now instant is the new on time. Now anyone with a smartphone is a hashtag away from being your, cons your partner as a preferred brand. So, with so much distraction that's going on, created for the palm of your hands, creativity really needs to make you stop, think, and take notice. And this, this is all despite the buzz, bings, and all the notifications trying to vie for your attention. And any brands now not only have to get attention from the competitors, but also from the new drama from the Kardashians, uh, the, the notifications for the next uh, limited edition sneakers, and worst of all, the cute, adorable, kawaii, mind-numbing cat videos. So, cat videos, we have to get attention back from them. Marketing has since become more than mastering of traditional channels of TV, pr TV, print, radio, and outdoors. So, never in a million years that I would think that I could launch a product using just one tweet and one Instagram post. With that, we should not underestimate the power of a screen safe and the shareability of group chats. With, so, at that time, I only had about 300 followers, and it was actually a cute little a thank you note for my team being able to deliver the first production run of my Chitato uh, Indomie on my desk and for my birthday. So I'm very fortunate to be able to work with two brands that complement each other. And the brief that I gave them initially was that the experience of eating the Chitato cannot be of a lesser experience than eating my Indomie goreng. <laughs> so, the demand went off the roof. We got the attention of the retailers. We gained about $323,000 worth of marketing value. And it reached about 36 million people. And best of all, we achieved 11 times of our projected sales. All good and dandy, but... <laughs> Thank you. All good and dandy, but I have one complaint. I'm putting it all out there. 
I have not received the dinner treat that was promised to me by the Chitato team, and that has been two years ago. <laughs> so, so with this, how many of you are familiar with a scene like this? Started with a brief, talking about a widget, trying to market it to millennials, and how can we make a viral campaign? So, three points that I would like to point out here. First, only old people say, I want to market to millennials. Secondly, Darth Vader does not represent my boss. It's purely coincidental, and I still need a job after this. Uh, <laughs> thirdly, if viral campaign is that easy to make, everyone would be doing it. So, creating a campaign that would go viral is 80% of th thorough planning, 10% of tears, either by the either by the agency if the client's not uh, not cooperative, or vice versa, and 10% of luck, and hopefully all of the stars align. So, let's go back to the question. Why are we so serious? I'm all for the use of data for decision-making. Creative campaigns these days are researched thoroughly. And to, pass, and to pass the research, usually the works cannot be too radical. And the, the more conventional works seem to get all the right ticks in the boxes. And it's just human nature that we strike off whatever we are unfamiliar with. So, this is not what we need today. Sometimes we get so caught up with, uh, sometimes we get so caught up with the numbers that we forget who we are talking to and what their points of views are. And with the cost of digital these days, that is much lower than what traditional media is, this actually allows us to reduce the risk of failure for us to try new stuff. And, and if a campaign doesn't work, we can easily replace it or just pull it off. And to re-quote Master Yoda, if we are doing the same things over and over again, how are we supposed to get different results? So the next few minutes, I would like to illustrate on how to succeed in not being serious. It's one personal campaign that I absolutely love from last year and two personal experiences. So, as marketeers, we can no longer reach our goals for awareness just by using paid media and PR. We have to remember that people are channels as well. The way to amplify impact is, to, the way to amplify impact is by inspiring creativity in others. So, how do we treat everyone as an extension of our marketing team? Let's start with our employees, our partners, and most importantly, our consumers. So if you're afraid of clowns, I would advise for you to close your eyes at this point. Clowns have always been a tad scary to start with, 
add that with a Stephen King's uh, classic horror movie, and a company who has been trolling its competitor really well. And on the scariest night of the year, makes for a fantastic campaign by Burger King. Come as a clown, leave, uh, eat like a king. You know, free whoppers for anyone who dresses as a clown. So, the results was brilliant. And the world went crazy, it was a global campaign, 35 countries, and 1,500 stores participated. The most interesting part is it amassed 110,000 clowns globally. Just imagine on what the media and the shareability is that. In the traffic in the stores went up by 27%, 21%, sorry, and was and sales actually increased by 15% per store, despite them giving out free whoppers. So, the next is based on my personal experience with the Indo ice cream, Nusantara campaign. I was in a meeting when the agency presented to me the idea. Growing up with the humor that comes with that comes with uh, Shaw Brothers uh, Kung Fu movies, the kitsch special effects of Indo Siar's uh, period uh, Sinatrons, and of course the abandonment of Quentin Tarantino's Kill Bill. I was really excited for this. But I remember that I was actually questioning the team whether they wanted to go ahead with this. So the, the decision was not as easy as one might think. So. I agreed only because it was going to be a digital campaign and that if anything, if the boss wanted, was to complain, I can just pull it out, pull the plug, and it would be minimal damage to my brand. Indo ice cream. Yeah, Indo ice cream Nusantara. So thank God that worked out. But one viral video does not make a campaign. It made a slew of uh, copycat videos, and what we needed to do was to the talkability. So we made an unboxing, a vlog, and also a contest to win my most coveted uh, handphone cover. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> That's my love. <laughs> the results was really lovely, and we got 20 million views, and our sales increased by 600 times for the first year, and for, for the first two weeks that we did. So, not bad for a challenger brand, and you know what? Finally, we got noticed. So, but I realized that during this that I was losing my ability to be childish. That I always tell the boss that there's a difference between being childish and immature. Being childish, in my opinion, is that how to imagine without much consideration. As we grow up, we limit our solutions within what we have done or a pattern of comfort zone. Next is the final... The final example of the day is something that is really close to my heart. Almost everyone has a memorable experience with Indomie. And as brand owners, we are really grateful. It's not something that we take for granted or lightly. So, how are we going to stay relevant? We needed to be careful to evolve with our core fan base. But, not toss them out in favor of a younger demographic. So being 45 years old, we had friends who have been with us since the beginning, but we had new friends who were more well-read, well-traveled, more informed, and definitely have a new definition of cool. We needed something. We needed something that, was, that doesn't seem like we're trying too hard to be hip, that we end up looking like that creepy friend that lingers around and reeks of desperation. And a creative campaign need not always have shock value. 
it's actually like having a nice chat with your friend where sometimes, you know, something that you reflect on later, one of those feel-good feel good moments. And most importantly, honesty is key. So, thank God that the Jadul trend was, was coming back. Every, anything vintage-ish was in fashion, art, fashion, uh, graphics, and all the local movies were actually going inching that, that direction. So, who better to represent than someone who was born 45 years ago? So, there's a risk though, a risk of us looking really jaded, and that would actually derail whatever we're trying to do. The vintage campaign was born. So, along with the a limited edition pack of 70s, 80s, and 90s. We did a tote bag as well. And this actually reminded our consumers of the rich history that we had. And I've always dreamt to recreate one of my, uh, or one of my archival ads. And this original ad that features Baguio is just an itching to be recreated. Whoever came up with this is genius. And so we created the quiche and the 70s goodness of it, of course, with a modern, pun with modern punchline and a YouTube star to make it more relevant to the new consumers um, that may not be familiar with Baguio or our ads. So even though a brand needs to evolve with the times, it, what it needs most is a center of gravity, a clear vision, and a commitment to stay true to its DNA. So, a brand still has to find a place in our hearts and our minds. And in this case, the right, uh, the right amount of humor does help. So this is definitely one campaign that I was really grateful my team was able to execute. Uh, really grateful that my team was execute and really proud that they are able to pull off from creative all the way to store. So, in short, let me propose to my peers here, let's get the attention back from those darn cute cat videos. <laughs> I hope that by sharing and putting myself on here, I would have encouraged my peers to go beyond and to drop and rewrite the self-imposed, and rewrite the self-imposed boundaries. Let's be serious about not being serious. Let's entertain, let's provoke, and let's challenge the status quo. Thank you.